behind Cast our cares aside Well, good morning, everyone. It's Michael here. I'm for, call, uh, I'm joining you from my office today, uh, and hopefully all the sound levels and everything are right. Uh, we have a visiting speaker at church this morning uh, who works with the uh, Persecuted Church. Uh, and so this morning, uh, rather than live streaming, uh, you're watching uh, this recording. Um, and this will be a very sort of simple service this morning. So um, let me begin our time together uh, with a call to worship. Let us praise the Lord with all our hearts. Together we'll praise the name of the Lord and sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Today we praise you for your unfailing love and your faithfulness, for your love, Lord, endures forever. I'd like to begin with uh, this opening prayer this morning. Let's pray together. God, our Father, we call on you like little children because we know that you love us and care for us like a loving parent. Because your son Jesus prayed to you as Father, so we pray this way. You created us to live with you and to ask for your help and guidance. Guide us in our time together, we pray in your name. Amen. 
Well, as I said, a very simple service in this recording, a bit shorter than normal, um, but as we normally would have, uh, we're going to read from God's Word. Uh, we're going to pray uh, together, uh, and uh, rather than our visiting speaker bring a message, uh, I've just got a few short reflections on a passage that I've been thinking about during this week from the Book of Acts and Persecution. But to begin our time, uh, let me turn now uh, to our Bible reading. And there we go. My picture is up there in the corner. Uh, let me move to the right scene on that. There we go. Uh, and we're going to begin uh, with uh, a psalm from David, a Psalm 138. And in this psalm, David comments on the promises God made to him in the covenant, in the Davidic covenant. Let's begin. Psalm 138, beginning at verse 1. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called you, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you. Lord, when they hear what you have decreed, may they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Well, may the Lord uh, add his blessing to the reading of his word today. Go back to the full screen there. Uh, we're going to uh, have our first song of praise. Uh, let me bring that up to us uh, now. Uh, let us uh, listen now to the first words of our hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. <laughs>
Okay, yes. All right. <laughs> Apologies there. Uh, getting back into use to uh, doing this from uh, the office. Um, we're going to continue now with our second set of readings uh, from the New Testament. And we've been making our way through Colossians and hearing uh, about Paul describing uh, uh, the risen Lord Jesus. And uh, he continues on here in our second chapter of Colossians, describing how uh, the incarnate Jesus, the bodily Jesus, offers us life by his resurrection, love by dealing with our legal indebtedness, and liberty because of who you and I are now found in. Our gospel reading is from Luke, and uh, in Luke 11, Jesus teaches us not only how to pray to our Heavenly Father, but also reminds us how, how much our Heavenly Father loves to give good gifts to his children. So let me bring up the passage from Colossians now. There we go. Uh, and let's begin with our reading from Colossians uh, chapter 2, uh, beginning at verse 6, and then reading through to verse 19. 2, 6 to 19. Okay, um, I might have missed just the last few verses there. Give me a second to edit this. Okay. All right. Colossians 2, uh, chapter, six, uh, chapter 2, verses 6 to 19. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you've been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands, your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him, through, the, through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come, the reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head, from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Now, from Luke chapter 11, we're going to read verses 1 through to 13. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. And a friend of mine on a journey, a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, 
even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of, of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Well, may the Lord add his blessing uh, to the reading of his word today. I think it's appropriate, having heard Jesus uh, teach us how to pray, that we come now before him in prayer. Uh, let's come and turn to the Most Holy One and confess our sins, confident in God's faithful and steadfast love for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, although we come to church on Sundays, we too often leave the rest of the week as though you don't exist. We act as though we created ourselves with no connection to you, with no hope of transcendence. Open us to your constant presence, Holy One. Teach us to pray. Restore our sight that we may commune with you each day in the light of eternity. Amen. Hear this from God's word. Neither death nor life nor powers, nor rulers, things present, nor future, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you or disqualify you from the body, but hold fast to its head who nourishes growth from God, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. I'm going to have another song now uh, as I just bring it up for us.
We've now come to the further reading of God's Word. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. There we go. <laughs> it auto plays for me. Uh, still getting used to being back onto a live streaming uh, uh, this way, you know, controlling it. Uh, what fun. Um, as I said, uh, I want to continue now. Uh, today, our visiting speaker uh, is talking about the persecuted church and uh, some thoughts about persecution uh, in the life of the early church have been uh, sort of around in my head. A couple of um, people have been discussing this particular passage from, from Acts, uh, a part of a forum that I'm a, a part of. And I just thought today, um, and this is not a full sermon or a talk, but I just wanted to share a few thoughts on uh, this particular passage from Acts uh, chapter 8, uh, verses 1 to 4. Um, our visiting speaker, uh, we're not live streaming, works in a, uh, amongst the persecuted church people uh, and is a bit uh, um, wanting not to put information out about uh, this on the, the internet. Um, so uh, let me read to you now from Acts uh, chapter 8. Uh, bring up, there we go. Acts chapter 8, uh, verses 1 through to 4. And Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word, wherever they went. Uh, a friend of mine was talking about this passage and uh, wondered why it is that when the book of Acts uh, could be best understood by Acts chapter 1 verse 8, where Jesus tells the disciples that they will be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and the ends of the earth. Why is it here when the persecution starts, uh, um, when uh, Stephen is stoned when Saul goes off uh, to Damascus uh, um, to, to persecute the Christians. Why is it that the apostles remain in Jerusalem? Why do they stay here in this place? Uh, is it that the apostles had forgotten the call of God and the, the command of Jesus to go into all the world and to be his witnesses? Uh, I think this is an interesting question today for us as we think about persecution. Uh, there are many in our world who suffer persecution for their Christian faith. Um, not the kind of persecution maybe we think here in the West, a bit of ridicule, a bit of a ribbing for, for going to church on Sunday, um, but a full-blown uh, uh, persecution, a, a risking of their own lives. And I think if many of us found ourselves in that circumstance, we too would want to flee. If our lives, our, our livelihoods, everything about our being and our existence uh, was to come under pressure of an external force, uh, we too might make a run for it. Uh, the incredible thing I think here about this passage is not that seemingly the apostles have forgotten the command of God, but that God is at work even despite persecution. And despite persecution, the word is preached. Now, I don't think uh, God scatters the church in Jerusalem via persecution in order that the gospel might be preached. The command is, and the command is a command of hope. Uh, the command is one that expresses, you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. I think the apostles coming under persecution, knowing the fragility of the Jerusalem church, knowing how small it is, uh, how new it is, how in its infancy it is, they want to stay there in that place and see it established. Uh, many of us will follow this same kind of principle. We start in our local area with what we know before we then move out into other areas, grow a business or an enterprise in one area till it gets to a, a viable and sustainable endeavor before then moving on. Uh, many of a business practice would, would say these kinds of things. And so it's uh, uh, not um, uh, an insignificant thing. Um, it's not uh, something uh, to 
consider downplay that the apostles stayed in Jerusalem with the idea of caring for the Jerusalem church. And the persecution happened because they preached the resurrected Jesus. Uh, They were already being witnesses in Jerusalem, so they were already obeying the command. What we see here is a fulfillment of other things that Jesus talks about, that we will be persecuted, that followers of him will suffer for uh, being part of the kingdom. Uh, The Sermon on the Mount uh, tells us, blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness sake. Uh, If we want to know if we are followers of Jesus, persecution will come along our path at some stage. But here is the encouraging thing. Persecution doesn't stop the proclamation of the gospel. Seemingly, that is persecution's purpose, to put silence to these people who are speaking. That's what we see in the book of Acts. But rather than putting silence, Stephen is exalted Godly men bury Stephen. They mourn for him deeply. Uh, Stephen's death becomes a witness to the resurrection and the work of Jesus. And as we heard about in Colossians, uh, the bodily Jesus comes, he dies and he's resurrected and we are raised to new life in him. So also is this twofold. We are raised to new life here. We live resurrected lives in this world but we are also raised to new life in the world to come. And even though Saul goes about seeking to destroy and silencing this message, dragging people from house to house, the exact opposite happens. There's a witness. And the witness of the apostles extends beyond Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria and the other parts of the earth. They are actually fulfilling the command, even if they are not necessarily going. I've been thinking a lot about this uh, recently as I've been reading um, from some of the saints uh, in the past. Uh, And thinking about these men hundreds of thousands of years ago, writing about their faith, their journey, uh, their love of Jesus. And thinking about how they're a witness beyond the place. Australia must seem to the ends of the earth. But reading Peter talk about what it is to be loved by Jesus, to be part of the royal priesthood and holy, he is being a witness here in Sydney in our lives today. And so it is uh, with all saints. Uh, So it is when uh, our lives and the message and uh, the work of Jesus in our lives is continued to be proclaimed, so it is that we continue to be witnesses. So I don't think we need to be uh, harsh or hard on the apostles for staying. What we need to reflect on is God's goodness and kindness and grace, that even in spite of ourselves and in spite of persecution, the message of the gospel is being proclaimed. And if persecution does come along our paths, We are not to worry about how this might hinder the proclamation of the gospel. For what this descriptive passage in uh, the book of Acts tells us is that the gospel will be proclaimed to the ends of the earth and is being proclaimed to the ends of the earth despite the persecution that comes to God's people. Well, let me pray for us now. Let's spend some time in prayer. Gracious and wonderful Father, we thank you for your kindness and goodness and love. You're pouring out upon us good gifts, your fatherly love. You give us not only what you love as our Father to give us, but you pour out upon our lives even things that we don't deserve. Thank you for your Son who came bodily into this world, who died for us, and forgave us of our sins, and showed us this love that we might live new resurrected lives and lives lived in liberty. Father, help your people around the world who are being persecuted for following you. Help them um, to cling to you. Help the message about your love and your son 
be proclaimed in their witness. Even if maybe in public gatherings they're not able to get together. Lord, work through them and their witness of their lives. And Lord, help us in more safe and less persecuted countries, not to rest on our laurels, but to know of your goodness and love and to be faithful in sharing of your, your, um, your son in this world around us. And so we pray and commit ourselves into your good hands, asking these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me finish now uh, with one final song uh, and I think this is appropriate uh, as we consider what it is to trust God even in the midst of persecution. Let me bring that up for us now. It's affirm what we've just heard from Ligon. How firm a foundation you say it's of the Lord it is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can we say than to you we have said, to you who forever to Jesus and encouraging uh, song for us today. Uh, whatever may be happening for you, no, I thought I changed that. Apologies. There we go. Um, whatever may be happening, know of the firmness of that foundation. Let me close with these words of benediction. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. May God preserve you, protect and keep you this day and for all eternity. Amen. Well, thanks for uh, joining. I hope this all works out fine, our sound levels and everything. Thank you for persisting with me as uh, I get back into the driver's seat of doing these things because uh, he's not uh, um, uh, assisting today. Um, and my daughter, who normally helps out with the live stream, uh, let me know. Um, I'm going to be on Zoom at 12 o'clock, our normal Zoom details. So if you uh, wish to join us then, uh, please feel free to do that. Until then, see ya.